Hey everybody! If you're fancy and just a little bit particular, you don't like default views, default apps, or default settings, then this video is for you. As you know, I've taken a deep dive into the Obsidian note taking software. The ability to generate knowledge graphs from your ideas is going to massively accelerate your idea generating processes. In this video, I'm going to show you three things. First, I'm going to show you how to customize some of the settings in Obsidian using something called CSS. Second, I'm going to show you how to leverage the Obsidian community in order to leverage the community generated themes. And finally, we're going to take a peek underneath the hood of Obsidian to see what sorts of things you can customize if you want to go down this rabbit hole. Before we get started with CSS, we're going to be working with essays 31 through 35 of David Perel's essays. If we click on our Perel table of contents and we scroll down, you can see that I've already added essays 31 through 35. Using the links below, go ahead and find these essays and add them to your knowledge graph. Look for things that don't make sense is an essay about trying to identify things that don't make sense to you, having curiosity about them, and then exploring them further. Cribs, my writing feedback formula, is a formula that David uses to give very specific feedback for writing. The but and therefore rule is an example of how David thinks about adding some tension and adding some conflict to his writing in order to engage readers. The Raymond Chandler rule is an example of how David thinks about keeping the story moving forward and using small sub stories, mini stories within his overall arc and narrative in order to engage the, the reader. And lastly, Lessons from Brunello Cuccinelli is an essay about how a famous designer has strong principles rooted in company culture that then David uses to think about his own company and his own work. Take a moment now to read through these essays, add them to your knowledge graph, and when you're finished, come back and join me and we'll dive into CSS and how to add a little bit of style to your graph. The first thing I want to show you is how to add some customization to your graph. We are going to be spending a lot of time in our settings menu today. If we open up our settings and we come down to appearance, we can see a couple of options here. The first one we're going to explore is CSS snippets. Early versions of Obsidian had a file called obsidian.css that lived in the vault folder. That's right here. But you can see that this is a legacy setting. Please consider moving your custom CSS file to the snippet folder below. This is a nice enhancement because previously we had to overwrite the CSS file. In this case, when we add small snippets, the master CSS file is going to be retained and any snippets we add will override the master CSS file and is a way for us to manage which snippets we want to activate and which we don't. Now we can see that CSS snippets are stored in vault slash dot obsidian slash snippets. This dot obsidian means that it's hidden. Fortunately, if we click on this link here, we can open up this folder and we can see it's empty as expected. So what we want to do now is we need to add a small file, a small snippet of code to this folder in order to activate the snippet and show you how it works. As a special example, I'm going to go to the Obsidian forum and get a small snippet of code to show you how this works. So let's navigate over to the forum. And this is a post, in fact, it's a meta post of aggregation of common CSS hacks within Obsidian. I'll put the link to the Obsidian forum in the description below. I'll also add this code snippet in order to make it easier for you. So here's a code snippet, but let's just scroll up a little bit. And the question that a user asked on the forum, can anyone tell me if it's possible to change how tags look? I'd like to highlight certain important tags. For example, complete as green, in progress as yellow, etc." And one user answered, this worked for me. So let's look at this code snippet for a moment. Dot tag is going to be the CSS attribute that we're going to change. href is going to say that the part of the tag that we're going to be looking for is something that matches important. So if it's important, then what we're going to do is we're going to follow these instructions in the curly brackets, and our instructions say color equals red. So we're going to take this snippet, we're going to copy it, and we're going to navigate over to a simple text file. Here's a text file we can paste. I'm going to make this plain text, say OK. Great. Now what we can do is we're going to add, we're going to save this, and I want to save it in my, let's just say my vault. And I'm going to call this red tag. Now this red tag is called red tag 
.rtf, or rich text file. But this isn't quite where we want to be yet. Next, what I want to do is I want to get this text snippet into this folder. Now, fortunately, we just saved this file in our vault. So here's my vault, David Perel, and all of our different markdown files. I'm just going to drag this over into this snippet folder. However, this snippet folder doesn't contain a CSS snippet. It contains a text file. So we can simply change the file type. Of course, it's going to freak out and say, are you sure you want to change the extension? I'll say, yes, let's use CSS. And now we have something that is red underscore tag CSS that contains this code snippet that we got from the forum. Let's navigate back to Obsidian now. We can then click on the Refresh button right here, and we can see that it, the instructions for Refresh told Obsidian to go back and look in the snippet folder and see if any snippets are there. And sure enough, we have something that is called red underscore tag. We can toggle this off and on if we want to use this snippet or not. I'll go ahead and close this now, ensuring that my red tag snippet is activated. And then I'm going to open up a test file. I'll say test note. This is a test note. It is very important. Now, the instructions for the snippet were to say, every time you see a tag called important, you should turn it red. And you might be saying to yourself, but wait, Matt, this isn't red. Well, that's because we're in edit mode. If we come up to preview mode, we should see that our tag is now red. Let's go back to our edit mode and say, this is a test thought. It is not very, let's go, it is not important. Neither is this idea. Now, when we come back to our preview mode, as you expect, this is our new red important note that has our important tag. And these are just our regular tags with our regular ideas. So what we've done now is we've overridden the system and we say, when we have a tag that is called important, we can change the note. And you can do this for all sorts of things. I would encourage you to go and look at this Obsidian forum thread where we can say, well, perhaps we want our tags to be pills in this sort of pill format. We can copy and paste this uh, snippet. We can go down, we can see that there's several other, perhaps we want line focusing, or we can um, look through all of the different options here. So this is just one way to personalize your knowledge graph to make it just for you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I know what you're thinking. This is freaking complicated. How do you expect me to take each one of these individual CSS snippets and apply them to my vision of the perfect theme? That brings us to the second thing I want to show you today. I'm going to show you how to change the appearance of your graph using themes contributed by the community. You want to go down to the settings button. We've been here a few times before. In here, you'll see appearance as one of the main options. In this menu, you'll see that we can choose Obsidian's default color. This is light. This is dark. But we can also go to the themes tab and we can choose a theme. Themes are stored in a secret folder within your vault that is .obsidian slash themes. We don't have any yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to encourage you to go to browse, and this will then open up some of the community themes. From here, you can browse the themes generated by the community and find one that looks nice to you. As we scroll down, we might try How about this one? Ars Magna. We can click preview. But in this case, preview doesn't help us so much because we're still looking at the themes. Let's just say use. And what will happen is it will say that I already have a custom file. Are you sure you want to override it? In this case, I already looked at this one, so I already have the file, but I'll say yes, override. So I've set this theme now. What I can do is I can then close out of this, and I can see that all of a sudden my graph looks different. I can see that my pages here, my notes on the left hand side, are a different color. And I can see that I have different colors of my nodes. In this case, here's my speaking note. I can also see other notes in different colors here. If I go up to my graph view, I can then see uh, the colors that I have set are orphan notes. So orphan notes are different colors. I can also toggle on tags, and you can see tags now show up. I can see Socrates is a tag, and this is from David's essays, Lesson from Bonello Guccinelli. This is going to be a nice way that we can find a theme different from the default 
that is aesthetically pleasing to us. Okay, so these community themes, they're nice and all, but it doesn't quite change that specific aspect that I want to change because, as you know, I'm a little bit fancy. So how do we do that? What are the things that I can get control over? Well, that brings us to the third thing I want to show you today. You're feeling quite confident now. I've given you the ability to make specific changes, to make sweeping changes, and you might be curious, what types of changes can I make now to my graph? In order to answer this question, we can take a peek under the hood of Obsidian. To do this, on a Mac, we're going to hold down Option, Command, I. This opens up a brand new menu. You haven't seen this before. This is the Developer Console within Obsidian. We have several different tabs here at the top, and I want you to go to the Sources tab and find app.css. App.css is the CSS file for the Obsidian software. If we scroll down, we can see the choices the developers have used for some of these visuals. For example, if we look at theme dark, all of the information in the CSS file for the default dark theme is here. Scroll down a little farther, and you can see that theme light has all of these defaults. And you might recognize a couple of things that look familiar, the purple color code here, the white background, and so on. If we keep going down, we can continue inspecting the CSS file and I'm showing you this because this is an opportunity to be inspired to know what sorts of things you can change. For example, if you want to change a button color, if you want to change what happens when you hover over something, if you want to change an icon, if you want to change really anything within the look and feel of the app, the types of things that you can change are in the CSS file. And the instructions and the way that you would go about doing that would be the CSS snippets that I showed you earlier in this video. So really, I'm not going to dive into how to change any of these features. Changing some of these is going to lead you down a deep rabbit hole of CSS. If this is interesting to you, there are plenty of resources on the internet that can show you how to learn CSS. My goal here is really to give you some of the early tools in order to change some of the specific features and colors and visual appearance of your graph, to leverage the Obsidian community to apply some of these themes to your graph, and then to know what features of the app can be changed. All right, this was a pretty technical video. I wanna thank you if you've made it this far. If you like what you see, give us a thumbs up. We've got a few more videos in the series where we're going to be experimenting with some new ideas. If you wanna be alerted when these videos are posted, go ahead, hit the subscribe button below. Otherwise, we'll see you next time.